Think about this. A city-state smaller than most U.S. counties suddenly flying one of the most advanced submarine hunters on the planet. Yeah, Singapore just went all in, picking the P-8A Poseidon as its new maritime patrol aircraft. Forget the cute little turboprops of yesterday, this is a monster jet that drops sauna boys like confetti and hunts subs like a pissed-off shark. And it changes the game in Asia's crowded waters. Today, we'll break down how a tiny island decided to play big league and why intelligence still beats budget. Here's the issue. Singapore sits on one of the busiest maritime highways in the world. Cargo ships, tankers, naval forces, and lurking submarines all crisscross those waters every single day. For years, the Republic of Singapore Air Force relied on Fokker F-50 MPA turboprops. Solid in the 90s, but today, they're slow, short-legged, and way out of their depth. Imagine trying to hunt a nuclear submarine with binoculars from a fishing boat. That's basically what they were doing. A threat shows up, the Fokker takes forever to get there, and by the time it arrives, the submarine's already halfway to Bali. In short, outdated kit, real danger. Enter the Boeing P-8 Poseidon. Basically, a 737 that hit the gym, swallowed a sonar lab, and strapped on torpedoes. This thing drops sono boys like breadcrumbs, scans entire sea lanes with its radar, and can fire harpoons if it feels like making a statement. It's fast enough to reach trouble zones before the enemy slips away, and smart enough to link into allied networks so everyone sees the same threat picture. For viewers, think of it like swapping your old Nokia for a smartphone that can also punch you in the face. And yes, it's expensive, but so is losing track of submarines sneaking into your backyard. Could Singapore have gone cheaper? Sure. Airbus offered the C-295 maritime patrol plane. Smaller, cheaper, easier to maintain. But cheaper isn't always smarter. That plane can loiter, but it can't sprint. It can scan, but it can't carry as much. And when the South China Sea lights up, you need speed, payload, altitude. Things the Poseidon brings in spades. Add to that Boeing's promise of regional support hubs, with ST engineering, spare parts pipelines, and long-term sustainment. Translation, Singapore won't just get planes, it'll get uptime, readiness, and interoperability with US, Australian, and Indian Poseidons already prowling the region. This is bigger than sensors and sono buoys. It's a signal. Singapore may be small, but it refuses to be ignored. By flying the P-8, it tells the region, we're watching, we're ready, and we're plugged into the big leagues. It's not just deterrence, it's diplomacy with wings. And let's be honest, it humiliates the narrative of small states can't project power. Every time a P-8 takes off, it tells neighbors propaganda is cheap, but coverage is expensive and Singapore just paid for it. That's how you punch above your weight in geopolitics. So here's the recap. Singapore traded in creaky old turboprops for a jet that hunts subs like a predator. Tiny island, giant hunter. The question, is this real deterrence or just high-priced theater? And for the call to action, look, don't pull a move like former Transport Minister S. Iswaran, who was caught taking gifts worth hundreds of thousands of Singapore dollars, tickets, private jet rides, all that jazz, from tycoon Ong Bang Sang. If you're going to do something, at least do it with integrity instead of hiding behind hospitality perks. Smash that like button on purpose. Subscribe because next time we peel back the armor on the P-8, what gear it really carries, what Singapore can and can't do with it, and whether this beast will actually patrol the South China Sea or just give politicians photo ops. This is Military Forces Unleashed, and always remember, in war and politics, it's not the loudest voice that wins, it's the one with the cleanest record, or at least, the clearest sonar.